Medical screening tests are becoming increasingly common. Most of us have heard of screening tests for tuberculosis, a skin test, HIV, prostate cancer, which is called PSA test, breast cancer, mammograms, colon cancer, colonoscopies, and so on. Screening tests are used to classify people as healthy or as falling into one or more disease categories. Despite the familiarity of screening tests, people often fail to realize that screening tests are not 100% accurate, and therefore misclassification is unavoidable. It is common to believe, for example, that if your prostate cancer test comes out positive, then you probably have prostate cancer. The goal of this presentation is to understand the terminology used in screening tests and be able to correctly determine how likely it is that someone who tested positive really has the disease. The material for this lecture was developed by Ann Beerley and Laura Lay at the University of Minnesota's Department of Biostatistics. I am presenting this lecture with their permission. After this lecture, you should be able to define prevalence, false positives and, negative, and false negatives, be able to interpret and calculate sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value. Finally, you should understand how prevalence impacts the positive predictive value. We will use an example involving a screening test for an unspecified kind of cancer. The table shown here provides counts of those with and without disease, labeled D plus and D minus, and their screening test outcomes, tested positive, T plus, and tested negative, T minus, for 25,000 individuals screened for a certain cancer. The prevalence of a disease is the proportion of the population of interest who actually have the disease. Of the 25,000 people screened here, 370 people had the cancer of interest. So the prevalence of this cancer in this population is 370 divided by 25,000 or 1.48%. 1, 1, the prevalence of a given disease may vary from one population to another by region, by age, by gender, by ethnicity, and so forth. So the population of interest must be specified. The test sensitivity is the proportion of those with the disease who, correctly, test positive. Of the 370 people with cancer, 100 of them tested positive, so the sensitivity of the test is 150 divided by 370, or 40.5%. Note that the denominator for the sensitivity calculation is the number of the people with the, with the disease, not the total number of people screened. A more sensitive test will catch a higher proportion of those who actually have the disease. This particular test caught a little under half, 40.5%, of those who really had the disease, which means it missed the remaining 59.5% of the people with cancer. Ideally, a test would have perfect 100% sensitivity, but such perfect tests are rare. A good screening test will have a test sensitivity in the 90% range. The test specificity is the proportion of those without the disease who correctly test negative. Of the 24,630 people without cancer in this study, 24,180 of them tested negative. So the specificity of the test is 24,180 divided by 24,630, or 98.2%. Note that this time, the denominator for the specification calculation is the number of people without the disease. The more specific a test is, the higher will be the proportion of the healthy people who are correctly identified. The particular test, this particular test correctly identified 98.2% of the healthy people as healthy, but it incorrectly identified the remaining 1.8% or 450 people as having the disease when they really don't. Again, the ideal test would have perfect 100% specificity, but this is nearly impossible in real life. A good screening test will have a test specificity in the very high 90% range, ideally 98% or higher. Notice that this test isn't perfect. Many of the people were correctly classified, shown in blue above. The 150 people with cancer who tested positive are called true positives because they tested positive correctly. They really did have cancer. The 24,180 people without cancer who tested negative are called true negatives because they tested negative correctly. 
they really were cancer free. However, a substantial number of people were misclassified, shown in red above. The 220 people with cancer who tested negative are called false negatives because they tested negative incorrectly. They really had cancer and the test missed it. The 450 people without cancer who tested positive are called false positives because they tested positive incorrectly. They really do not have the disease. When a false negative occurs and the test misses a sick person, correct diagnosis of the disease is delayed or may never occur, which clearly may have undesirable consequences. When a false positive occurs, however, and a healthy person is told they may have cancer, there are also undesirable consequences, including costs, costs and risks of follow-up testing, and anxiety and emotional distress. The perfect screening tool would have uh, the perfect screening test would have 100% sensitivity and 100% specificity and would never misclassify anyone. Unfortunately, there aren't any perfect screening tests. Healthcare policymakers have to balance the risks of both kinds of errors in deciding where to set the cutoff level for a given test and whether to recommend a test for wide use. But we aren't policymakers. We are patients. What we really want to know is not how sensitive the test is, but how likely is it that we really have cancer if we tested positive. The positive predictive value, also known as PPV, of a test is the proportion of people who tested positive who actually have the disease. In this study, there were a total of 600 people who tested positive. Of these, only 150 really had cancer. So the PPV is 150 divided by 600, or 25%. Only a quarter of the people who tested positive actually have the disease. The other 75%, 450 people, are false positives. Similarly, the negative predictive value, called NPV, of a test is the proportion of people who tested negative who actually do not have the disease. In this study, there were a total of 24,400 people who tested negative. Of these 24,180 were cancer-free. So the NPV is 24,180 divided by 24,400, or 99.1%. Nearly all of the people who tested negative really were disease-free. The remaining 0.9%, 220 people, are false negatives. Note how careful you need to be about denominators. For a PPV, the denominator is the total number of people who tested positive, not the total number of people with the disease and not the total number of people in the study. The positive predictive value, again the PPV, in this study is rather low at 25%. Only 150 of the 600 people who tested positive actually had cancer. This low PPV is partly because the test sensitivity isn't very good. So a lot of the 370 people with cancer were missed and ended up in the T minus column, the 220 people. It is also partly because the disease prevalence is low. Nearly all of the people in this population are cancer-free, 24,630 people. So even though the test specificity is quite high at 98.2%, the sheer number of cancer-free people means there will be a substantial number of false positives, 400 people in this, 450 people in this case. The 450 false positives overwhelm the 150 true positives, leading, leaving, leading to a relatively low PPV. <clears throat> now let's explore the effect of disease prevalence on test PPV a bit more, using the example of AIDS screening. In example one, screening is carried out on the general population, in which the prevalence of AIDS is low. Out of the 100,000 people screened, only 100 of them have AIDS, so the disease pre uh, prevalence in this population is 100 divided by 100,000, or 0.1%. Of those 100 people who have AIDS, 98 of them test positive, so the test sensitivity is 98 over 100, or 98%. Similarly, 99,900 people do not have AIDS, and 97,902 of them test negative, so the test specificity is 97,902 divided by 99,900, which equals 98%. So what is the positive predictive value of this test? A total of 2,096 people test positive, but only 98 of them really have AIDS, so the PPV is 98 divided by 2,096. 
which is 4.7%. Less than 5% of the people who tested positive for AIDS in this screening actually had the disease. Over 95% of the positive test results, 1,998 people, were false positives. Example 1 illustrates screening test results in a population with low prevalence of the disease. The sensitivity and specificity of the test are both high. However, since the disease prevalence in the population was very low, only 0.1%, the results of the screening test have very low positive predictive value. Only 4.7% of those who test positive actually have the disease. In example 2, screening is carried out but on a subset of the population, which is known to be at high risk for AIDS. So the prevalence of AIDS is higher. Out of the 100,000 people screened, 20,000 of them have AIDS. So the disease prevalence in this population is 20,000 divided by 100,000, which equals 20%. The test sensitivity and specificity are fixed properties of the test, not the population. So they are the same as before. Out of the 20,000 people who have AIDS, 19,600 of them test positive, so the test uh, sensitivity is 19,600 divided by 20,000, which is still 98%. Similarly, 80,000 people do not have AIDS, and 78,400 of them test negative, so the test specificity is 78,400 divided by 80,000, which is still 98%. Now, what is the po positive predictive value of this test in this subpopulation? A total of 21,200 people test positive, and 19,600 of them really have AIDS. So the PPV is 19,600 divided by 21,200, which equals 92.5%. Most of the people who have tested po positive for AIDS in this screening actually have the disease. Only 7.5% of the positive test results, 1,600 people, were false positives. <coughs> Example 2 illustrates screening test results in a population with high prevalence of the disease. The sensitivity and specificity of the tests are both high as before. However, since the disease prevalence in the population was comparatively high at 20%, the results of the screening test have good positive predictive value. 92.5% of those who test positive actually have the disease. The PPV of a screening test depends not only on the sensitivity and specificity of the test, but also on disease prevalence in the population screened. The higher the prevalence, the higher the test's positive predictive value. Screening for conditions with low prevalence in the general population is most effective when done on a high-risk group. This is the rationale for limiting screening for certain conditions to older individuals or individuals with increased risk for the condition. What happens, though, if you're reading a journal article or an article online which does not display the da data laid out in a table like the ones we've been considering? Suppose it simply gives you the test sensitivity and specificity and the prevalence of the disease in the population of interest. How would you go about calculating the positive predictive value? I recommend thinking about an imaginary study and using it to fill in the table above, like this. Let's say that the article gave the test sensitivity as 93%, the test specificity is 98%, and the disease prevalence as 10%. Let's imagine that we sample 1,000 people from this population for our imaginary study. Therefore, n in the table above is 1,000. The disease prevalence is 10%, so that means that 10% of 1,000, or 100 of the people in the study sample, have the disease. So g is 100, and h is what's left over, or 900. The sensitivity of 93% means that 93 out of the 100 with the disease will test positive. So a is 93, and the other 7 test negative, so b is 7. The specificity of 98% means that 98% of the 900 without the disease test negative, so D is 98% of 900, which is 882, and the remaining 18 test positive, so C is 18. You can then add to obtain E and F. Your result should look like the table above. Now that we have the table filled in, it is straightforward to calculate the positive predictive value of this test. Of the 111 people who tested positive, 93 really had the disease and 18 were false positives. So the PPV is 93 divided by 111, or 83.8%. The test sensitivity and specificity were both high, and the prevalence was comparatively high. 
10% of the population had the disease. So the positive predictive value of this test is decent. Nearly 84% of the people who test positive really have this disease. One final note. Remember that prevalence and test characteristics like sensitivity, specificity, PPV, and NPV are all just proportions. Therefore, as we have seen before, the proportion observed in a given study sample is only an estimate of the true population proportion. The sensitivity observed in a given study is an estimate of the true test sensitivity. Furthermore, as we have seen before, the results from a particular study can only be generalized to the population of interest if the sample was representative of the population.